It's that time of year again. Now, what in the world are you going to get your favorite whiskey person? How about something a little unusual? Well, coming up is my gift guide for the whiskey enthusiast. I'm Leanne, and this is Scotch on the Bayou. Finding the perfect gift for your whiskey person can be a challenge. You can always grab a bottle of their favorite or maybe challenge them with something new they've not had before, but you can also get a little creative. Check the description for timestamps for each of the categories and also know that there are links to most all of the items there. Some of those links are affiliate links and all that means is they'll cost the same if you buy them any other way but buying them through the affiliate link actually helps support the channel. Wherever I could, I put a link straight to the maker and that way your dollars are going straight to help that person who's creating something special. Now, let's get started. The first category is artwork. Whiskey in itself is a work of art. So why not present some art for the whiskey lover in your life? These creative items would be perfect for anyone's bar, office, or whiskey room. So here are a few that I chose. The storefront of Four Shots and Saints. Lindo, the artist, has gorgeous prints of her pen and ink drawings, most of which she did when she was actually in Scotland. This woman knows her whiskey, she knows the essence and the magic of Scotland, and she puts it on paper. Also, check out your local art fair. This is one of my favorite things that I've found, and it's a New Orleans artist named Sean Allman. And I love having that piece of artwork in my space. Within my bar is this really cool slate print of the old absinthe house, a uh, New Orleans scene. And for Christmas, a couple of years ago, my brother painted this really cool Slagial sign. Uh, with the alligator and put it on a piece of reclaimed oak. I love how you can bring art and whiskey together. The next category is barware, and that's always a great idea for a gift. You can never have too many glasses, right? <laughs> well, maybe, but it's really important to know how your person drinks their whiskey. Do they drink it neat? Do they drink it over ice? or do they prefer cocktails? Because that will help dictate what type of glass you might want to buy. So here are four suggestions for someone who prefers to drink their whiskey neat. That is with no ice or without cocktails. So they're just pouring the whiskey from the bottle into the glass and enjoying it that way. Notice that all of these glasses are tulip shaped. So they have a larger bulb or base for a well for the whiskey to sit in and then the nose tapers up so that when you get your nose into the glass those aromas are staying closer and tighter into the glass this is why it's important not to use a rocks glass or an open glass to drink your whiskey neat you get a better experience with a tulip glass so the Glen Karen is absolutely the gold standard on this and available in a lot of different uh, variations. You know, a plane, you can have them um, monogrammed, and there's also some really cool um, sets available to maybe do blind with different colors. Along with that, in the same sense, is the copita. And the copita is basically uh, a tulip shape or a sherry glass, and may or may not have a top on it. But this allows for a wine stem type glass. It's a bit daintier uh, and some people just prefer that. And my friend Bob H sent me this Glendale whiskey glass, which I really like. And it's almost uh, a combination of the Copita because it has more of a stem and a Glencairn. Um, truly does have a, a wider base so the alcohol can spread out a little bit more in the glass than the Glencairn. But I, I really love this glass and the way it holds. And finally is the Scotch on the Bayou barrel taster because we just got new glasses in and I wanna share those with you. 
proportion wise very much like the Glendale uh, glass where it's wider at the base but again it has a tighter uh, opening so that those aromas stay in there and you can really dig in I love this glass because you can actually you know hold on to it I like my whiskey to be a little warm so if it's cool um, I can give a little heat to that glass it's steady it doesn't fall and I just love it so links to everything again in the description there's a couple of accessories that go within barware as well most everybody goes oh well I'll get them a flask and flasks are a great way to transport whiskey on an occasion from one place to the other the problem I have with flasks is they're normally made out of metal, which I don't particularly care for. So the next item on my list is the Rag Proper Glass Flask. Now I was part of their first Kickstarter program before they ever got on a large scale. These, um, the ones that I have, um, a leather one here, and then this one is silicone, and I really love it because um, it's sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> there's no metal so it doesn't have an effect on the whiskey it's glass um, you can see how much whiskey is in the flask and it comes with a couple of different tops metal and plastic so that you may or may not be able to sneak this in in certain places I will not confirm nor deny but it's a fantastic gift a little pricey but you get what you pay for I've dropped this a couple of times and it's perfectly fun. Now, most people that like to drink their whiskey neat also like to play with their whiskey with water. And you can always use a straw or, you know, a pipette, something like that. But these beautiful water droppers are a great gift idea. So check those out. They come in a few different styles. I love this one that looks like a little pot still at the top. Blown glass, absolutely gorgeous and a great gift idea. And finally in barware, you're looking for a little stocking stuffer cocktail napkins are it i may or may not also confess to having a problem with cocktail napkins i have lots of them <laughs> ask my husband i have lots of them but they're cheap and they're cute and they're usually funny so what a great idea to pour a stocking stuffer now let me know what your favorite whiskey gift is something that you've gotten before or something that might be on your wish list if you enjoy this video, please make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button. And also know all the links for these items are in the description. So on to our next category, which is vintage items. Whiskey and cocktail culture have gone through many iterations over the years. And because of that, there are some really cool vintage items floating around. You just have to do a little digging and a little treasure hunting to find them. But when you do, it's so much fun. Go hit the thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, even antique malls to find some really unique items. A great vintage item are decanters. They can be crystal, or they can be specialty items and these are some of my favorites my mom is constantly looking for items and she found this absolutely adorable french made decanter her little bun is the stopper and she's just so cute we're big lsu fans and when i was able to find this at a garage sale i had to snag it and of course jim bean did an entire series of different automobiles in the 70s all filled with their whiskey and believe me those items are still out there to be found another great item are swanky swigs a really cool glassware from the 60s these are perfect for those who drink their whiskey on the rocks or if they really like doing cocktails it makes a fabulous old-fashioned vessel but be sure to know don't ever put these in the dishwasher these are hand wash only these glasses are more than 60 years old and they'll stay this gorgeous if you just take care of them. There's some other really cool collectible items and some distillery brand things like this tray from Grant's and this water pitcher from Johnny Walker. Both very neat, found in antique stores, along with this recipe book. This is from 1939, coming off the years of prohibition and I absolutely adore it. It's got a wooden cover 
and the most adorable illustrations and very simple cocktails. This is cocktails before all of the accoutrements of juices and things like that. Very simple putting a few things together to make an outstanding cocktail. This is one of my favorite things and I have it displayed in my bar. This is one of my favorites too. It is a Sazerac bar from the Roosevelt Hotel drinks menu. The graphics on this again are just gorgeous and I love how it's so nostalgic. One other cool thing from there, this was an individual setup. They would have hundreds of these to where they would pre-pour all of them so that they could quickly dump and serve folks at the bar. Another great way to show your support for whiskey and for those of us in the YouTube world is channel swag through clothing or other items. So for example, Scotch on the Bayou, we have three different styles of swag. This is the Slange Y'all, Scotch on the Bayou, and then the Camp Drams logo. All of those are available on my spring website. Again, link in the description as well as any of your other favorite YouTube channels. And most all of the channels also have things called challenge coins, um, which is just a little ceramic coin, kind of like this. This is my Scotch on the Bayou one, and they're usually numbered. Um, this one is uh, 25 Solange all on the back. And it's a great way to, you know, use it as a topper for your whiskey if you do a couple of multiple pours again a way to to uh, support your channel but also if you're out there at the bar and you put your challenge coin down and your buddy doesn't have his he's buying your drink so it's always good to have one in your pocket now most whiskey geeks are geeks for a reason they want knowledge they want to learn they want to dig down into the details and gather as much information as they can to learn about this wonderful elixir. So giving the gift of education is a super idea. And here are a couple of suggestions I have. Most of y'all know I attended the Island Whiskey Academy and it's awesome to be able to go there. And if you can, get there. But if you can't just jump over to Isla, this is the next best thing. Rachel McNeil has developed a online course called the whiskey affinity and it really dives into the you know whole mechanics of making whiskey but it shows the intrinsics as well the environment the culture this all the senses the people this delves into the mystique and the culture of making whiskey now, if you really want to go into more of the technicality and an overview of how whiskey is made, then check out the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy's online courses. There are a few different ones. There's even one for Jen. Those will give you really good foundational basis of how whiskey is made, how to taste whiskey, and go through those mechanics. Here's another stocking stuffer idea for you, and that's these great 33 books um, makes these little pocket tasting journals so when you have a dram you could sit down and you can actually document what you think about it from the color to the flavor and nosing of it the link in the description goes straight to his website where he has these journals and some other whiskey related items and last in this category is a great resource when you're really getting into tasting and trying to determine what is that that I'm smelling? What is that that I'm tasting? And just walking through the progression of the dram itself. Sometimes you need a prompt. Sometimes you need a little help figuring out what those things are. And that is this beautiful tray called Charlie's tray. Writing on the tray walks you through how to do a tasting, but also gives you prompts on what are you tasting? Is it sweet? Well, what kind of sweet is it? Is it fragrant? Is it floral? Is it nutty? You know, you're, you're going through this and as you taste and read through this uh, text on the tray, you really can hone in on what you're actually tasting. And our final category is books. 
I mean, how cool would it be to pour a nice dram, sit back, relax, and read through a volume of two about your favorite topic, whiskey. This makes a great, great gift. So here are a few of my favorites. The Malt Whiskey Yearbook is an author-produced book that is a valuable resource and most all of my whiskey geek friends have one of these. Um, they come out every year and while they talk about each of the distilleries every year, there are new articles and updates um, as each one is produced. Um, they're absolutely a beautiful volume uh, outlining about uh, all the, the specifications, the who, what, where, when of history about distilleries, all the distilleries, what new distilleries have come in, um, what closed distilleries there are, and also highlight articles on those in the industry, what they're doing, the, the way whiskey is made, new aspects of what's coming on the horizon. It's just a really great volume. And if you study this, you might score better on Aquavitae's quiz. Just saying. This next book I picked up at Tales of the Cocktail one year, and I love it. It's called Distilled Knowledge, and it's the science behind drinking's greatest myths, legends, and unanswered questions. Uh, love this because it gives a more of a layman's term on how things are made within whiskey, what effect it has on us when we do drink it. Um, and I love, again, the illustrations in this book. Um, it's very groovy, but even to the point of showing um, graphically how we taste. I just really love how things are laid out, um, very well explained, easy to read, and um, a link to this is in the description below. Another book that goes over the science of whiskey is called Proof, literally the science of booze by Adam Rogers. And this book, easily available um, print or uh, online, goes into a little bit more detail on fermentation, aging, maturation, things that were covered in the previous distilled knowledge book, but maybe upped a little bit more. And I keep this on my Kindle and I'm constantly referencing it. So it's a great choice as well. Now, being a woman who likes whiskey isn't actually all that strange nor rare um, because women in whiskey have been around for a very long time. Actually, we helped save whiskey. This book by Fred Minnick, um, Mr. Bourbon, <laughs> is really good and it, it does talk about how women have been involved in all aspects of whiskey making and tasting and drinking um, but also what their role was to make sure that we still have that liquid today so check this book out by Fred Minnick and the last book is one I don't have yet so hopefully Papa Noel will be bringing that maybe for Christmas we'll see but it is called A Sense of Place and it's by Dave Broom and he's a longtime writer of whiskey and he knows Scotland and um, really delves into his journey around Scotland and, and what whiskey has to offer. Uh, it is always an emotional read. I love the way he writes. Um, he gets into the personality of the whiskey and especially of those who uh, contribute to making the whiskey. So check out A Sense of Place too by Dave Broom. So Got your list ready? All those folks on your list that were naughty or nice, have you figured out what you're getting? I hope this list was helpful and that you found a couple of things that you can secure for the big day for your whiskey person. I hope Papa Noel brings you what you want. And until next time, slaughter y'all. <laughs>